Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Tamo from Final Job in Germany. Today I'm here with my former coach, Turzo. Hey, Turzo, how are you? I'm great. What about you? I'm also very good. Turzo, in that part of our interview, we want to talk about what skill set do you need to bring to the table to work in data science and machine learning in Germany? We want to talk about what is the work culture like in Germany? And we want to talk a bit also about work-life balance in Germany. First of all, Turzo, you, we met last year. You switched jobs here in Germany. We helped you with that in our first part. We're going to link this video here. We're going to talk, to, we talked about why some people are not getting calls. What is the interview process like? And what can you do to overcome that, to get more calls and also to master the interview process? And today, again, we're going to talk more about what skill sets you need to have to work here. You are already working in Germany for, I think, more than five years now. So you have a good understanding of the German job market. Maybe give us a quick intro about yourself and then we deep dive into the questions. Yeah, so I'm working uh, in a, as a data scientist for in Germany for maybe more than four years. I mean, during my four years, I have seen a lot of like ups and downs in the market. But mm -hmm. the thing is like, uh, if someone wants to start freshly as a data scientist, my advice would be to know about the fundamentals really well because people are coming from uh, maybe different kinds of universities, colleges, and so on. So they need to be a very, very good in their fundamentals. So this is the most important things because in the industry, we uh, always uh, deal with a lot of real life problems. So, mm. which needs a lot of fundamental knowledge to solve. What if we talk about fundamentals? What would you say okay, if you had to name some some tech skills? <clears throat> yeah, first of all, you need to know about different kinds of machine learning algorithms, uh, um, and then you need to know like which kind of algorithms are we needing in this in a specific case for an example let's say we do we need a supervised learning algorithm or do we need a unsupervised learning algorithm in different use cases so this is the most important thing and the first important thing is i didn't talk about that you need to understand the data as a data scientist like mm -hmm. you need to get insights from the data you need to know like how to make the data unfold and uh, make your problems streamlined so this is the most important thing. And for that, you all might also need to know about different kinds of statistical knowledge. And so mm -hmm. like what can be a good, I didn't know. I mean, let's say what can be a good uh, evaluation uh, metric for one mm -hmm. specific use case. So mm -hmm. this kind of stuff we need to know. Okay. When we speak about hard tech skills, obviously you need to have a very good understanding of Python. Um, and yeah, what yeah, else would you, would, you, would you mention here? Yeah, so as a data scientist, Python is a must that I can say. You need to learn and know Python, do a little bit of lead coding in order mm. to like brush up your programming skills and so on, solve mm. a lot of problems, maybe fundamental problems from different uh, programming contests and so on, to like a little bit brush up your programming skill. And then you need to know about uh, Pandas, which is also very important in order to uh, analyze and work with the data frames because mm. everything at the end would be a data frame. So mm. this is the uh, main important thing. You also need to visualize the stuff to show mm. your colleagues or maybe visualize by yourself. For that, you mm. need to know about different kinds of tool set. They are already available. I can name some of the basics ones, basic ones, which yeah. uh, are like Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, and so mm. on. So these kind of important uh, libraries is a must to know. And mm. then... For the machine learning engineering part or for the machine learning stuffs, you need to know um, scikit-learn. This is a mm -hmm. quick kind of library to uh, like without investing a lot of time um, building up algorithms, you can just use ready-made libraries and so on to uh, deal with your use case. And this is basically the basic machine learning stuff. And if you want to go with the deep learning stuff, like machine learning is one thing, and then you might need to switch to deep learning if you have a lot of data. And if you can't do, if you don't know that which uh, features are very important uh, in my uh, in my data. So if you are unsure about that, you need to go to deep learning. So for deep mm -hmm. learning, you there are kind of tools that you might need. 
one specific tool I can tell you uh, that everyone needs to learn is PyTorch. This is the mm. most important thing right now, which is developed by Facebook. Mm. PyTorch is mostly used by every uh, every company in Germany that I can mm. say. Previously, people also used TensorFlow, mm. but uh, like getting to know both of them is mm. uh, like definitely will help. Mm. And mm. yeah, these are some of the technologies that is a must to learn. And then you might need to know about different kinds of cloud-based technologies right now, if you mm. want to apply for a job uh, in Germany. For an example, uh, Microsoft Azure uh, mm. machine learning platform. You might be a you might be dealing with your uh, with that tools and technology in your future job and so on. So this is very important to know, like Amazon AWS and so on. So, Already there are a lot of uh, tutorials and so on, but main challenge is that you can't use them if you don't pay. So mm. this is the most important thing. I mean, if you already work with that, that's fine. If you are already a student, you can get a student account and get uh, get your hands on them and then do different kinds of small project with them. That will be a very good learning. Mm. But I mean, I can all I can say that these are some of the things that I can name, which mm. are very important. You're working for a very big German company at the moment, maybe without giving too much specific insights or to things you, you're not allowed to talk about. But what are some of the questions, the challenges you're currently dealing with at your, in your current project? I mean, really hands on. <clears throat> yeah. The thing is, when you are studying in the university, you are doing a lot of projects. But doing uh, dealing with some use cases in industry is much more different because you are working with real life data. So you, I mean, there is no specific uh, standard case that you will get your uh, get your data processed very easily. First mm -hmm. of all, the, you have to like know the strategies, how you process your data to streamline the whole process to deal with the use case. So this is the most important thing. So dealing with production data is the one of the most uh, difficult thing that I can say. Uh, if you are comparing with your university knowledge. The thing is right now, um, landscape has changed because there is also Gen AI. Mm -hmm. So previously people were dealing with a lot of uh, data um, like without getting a template of a code, for an mm -hmm. example. And then nowadays people has a chance to get already a template of the code and then if they have advanced knowledge, they can tweak the code and um, deal with every scenario much faster. Mm -hmm. So if someone is using Gen AI, this kind of mm -hmm. generative AI, then chat GPTs and so on, then mm -hmm. they, they will be definitely a lot more faster than before uh, mm -hmm. if they want to deal with such kind of data. But mm -hmm. you need to know the insights. So this is the one of the most important thing. And the thing is, things might not get uh, expected results. So this is one of the things. And mm -hmm. uh, you, someone should not be overwhelmed or maybe disheartened if things doesn't go well. In one of the use cases, you need to think alternative always. Mm -hmm. You need to have a plan B every time. So this is one, one of the most important things. Think, I mean, believe me, things might not go what you expect. Mm -hmm. Because mm. you don't know the data. This data is dynamic mm. in the in the industry. Any any other uh, t if we speak about tech skills wanted in Germany? Any other um, things we did not talk about regarding the tech tech skills? People needs to know about right now in every company. I think the NLP skills, core NLP skills that mm. I didn't talk about because every company is going towards this Gen AI stuff. Mm. They want to investigate. Uh, this uh, this technological revolution nowadays. So they want to know like how this Gen AI stuffs are improving their everyday lives. So they need to learn about transformers, then the hugging face and so on in mm. order to know like how this uh, encoder decoder works in order mm. to generate text and help them in day-to-day -day lives. Next to your tech skills, uh, how would you describe the work culture in, in German companies? Yeah, the work culture. I mean, every in every company there is there. I mean, there might be someone who is 
organizing the task uh, distribution, mm -hmm. maybe a product owner, maybe a team leader, maybe a project manager and so on. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your task will be uh, given in sprints. Mm -hmm. So you get your task, uh, let's say in one of the sprints and then you get your time. And then at the at some point of time, you have to deliver the work that you have done. Mm -hmm. So all of them are like time bound. So you also have to think about the time management. This is also mm -hmm. important here mm -hmm. because you don't get indefinite time to do a job or do, mm -hmm. a, a, a do your task. So you have to manage your time really well. So this is one of the things. You mentioned before it's really goal driven here, right? Yeah, it's really goal driven. You have to like, you, you know in advance that what are the goals? for a specific, mm -hmm. uh, specific use case or task. So you mm -hmm. need to know in advance, or you already know in advance, and then you try to achieve that goal in anyhow. Mm -hmm. So this is the main important thing in, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for working as, a, uh, working as a developer in a company. So this mm -hmm. is one of the main thing. It's not only, uh, only for a data scientist, it's for every uh, software developer. So, so you have to deliver, huh? you get your task, no, no one cares how you do that, right? If you, if you, uh, you don't need to work long hours, but you need to, in the end, uh, yeah, deliver results. And add one additional thing, yeah, definitely that's true. But one additional thing you have to also care about this code quality, because a lot of things would be reused in the future, mm -hmm. or you own. Uh, you yourself will be using that uh, for future as as well. So this can save a lot of time. So code quality is very important. So it you should it should be precise. It should be also very uh, adaptive. So that if someone else wants to work with that code, they need to also be adapted very easily for that mm -hmm. code. So you need to like document the code very well. And also you have to think about like how efficient you are writing the codes and so on. So this is very mm. important. Mm. And how would you compare the, the work culture if, if you compare that to your home country where you are from, what are the biggest differences as, uh, also to in regards to work-life balance? Ah, yeah. So this is, I left out like in Germany, work-life balance is a thing because no one will bother you outside of your work hours. So this is one of the main thing that you find in Germany, which is not the case in my country. So mm. this is a lot different. So maybe someone is coming and saying that, yeah, you, you have to like do this task now or even maybe at, at night, 10 p.m. someone is giving, giving you an SMS. Let's say your boss is sending you a message like you have to do that now. Mm. So this kind of stuff is also common in my country, even after mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. So in, in Germany, that's not the case. How, how many hours do you work a week and uh, how is that structured your work week? <clears throat> yeah, so in Germany, most common, commonly uh, people are working like 39 hours per week. This is mm -hmm. the most, this is a common structure, 39 or 40 hours, depending mm -hmm. on the company. And yeah, so for each day, it might be eight hours, mm -hmm. like roughly, mm -hmm. which will contribute to your 39 or 40 hours per week. Mm -hmm. So this is like how uh, things work in Germany. And uh, do you work remotely or do you work from home? <laughs> yeah, one of the things is like right now, most of the companies have this, have this hybrid, uh, hybrid working mode. Mm -hmm. So they might require you to go to office maybe for for a one or two days or three days and then rest of the time you can work from home. But you join your calls, do your discussions, depending on the place that you are you are working currently, whether you are in high, uh, you are in remote uh, working mode or maybe on-site working mode, you have to join the because because of like, you are working remotely it it's not the case that the meeting might not happen so mm. <laughs> this will happen anyway okay thanks to though um anything else uh, you might think what is important for data scientists or machine learning engineers who are interested in, in in working in germany what would you say 
Yeah, the thing is, first of all, uh, my uh, first uh, suggestion would be be up to date with the technology because things are changing rapidly. So mm -hmm. you need to keep on keep an eye on the changing trend of the technology and adapt mm -hmm. yourself to the new technologies regularly. So without mm -hmm. that, no one can survive in any uh, any software development field. Mm -hmm. um, rather, it's a, a data science field or maybe machine learning field or maybe a generic software development field. So mm -hmm. one needs to be updated. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I hope we maybe one day we meet also in person. If you ever come to Berlin, you are more than invited for now. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks that you found the time today. Many yeah. thanks. Thanks again. And as always, if you're also watching and you're a data scientist, maybe you work in tech and IT, you want to move to Germany, you're already working in Germany, you want to switch jobs, watch our 20 minutes video training, which you find below this video and get in touch with us. Um, we're going to Help you out. See you soon. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao, ciao.